Hi guys, I'm Paul here from Visu Technologies and this morning I wanted to talk to you about superchargers, particularly Jaguar Land Rover superchargers. This here is a brand new Eaton supercharger and uh, we get two questions mainly about these. Why is it making a funny noise and what can I do to make it go faster? This particular charge actually has been re-engineered by Howard, but they look very similar. So without teaching anybody to suck eggs, the first thing I wanted to do is just say, do we all know how a supercharger works? In Germany, they would call this a compressor, and completely translated, that actually means air pump, and that quite literally is what a supercharger does. Similar in a turbo, in some ways, the idea behind a supercharger is to get air into the engine in a way that is not normally aspirated, so forced air induction, and that is what a supercharger does. It pulls air in, it compresses it, and pushes more air into the engine that would naturally be there. And the way that it does that, it's a little bit confusing in some ways, but it folds the air inside the supercharger here and you'll come and take a look the two there are two blades that fold on top of each other literally folding air and pushing air into your engine now that sounds a bit of a strange thing to do but when this runs it up to 17,000 rpm that's an awful lot of air being pulled and folded into your engine Generally, they're incredibly reliable. If we've all seen the Mad Max movie, they don't quite work like that. There isn't a magic switch that you turn on and off to turn them on. Um, they're running permanently from this pulley here at the front down to a pulley on the front of the engine on the crankshaft. Um, so that all the time your engine is running, your supercharger is running. The more revs you do in your engine, the faster the supercharger is turning. So that's the basic principle. It's all about getting more air into your engine. Now, whilst I say they're incredibly, incredibly reliable, and generally they are, there are two things that tend to go wrong with these. First of all, there's a set of bearings here in what's called the snout. Now these snout bearings can get too much free play, and what you'll notice is when you turn this pulley by hand, you get a clonk, clonk, clonk noise. That shouldn't be there. What you notice when it's fitted to a car, most obviously, is when you turn the engine off, you'll get a series of knocks once the engine is starting to stop. Again, that indicates that it's free play here. Eventually, if untreated, that will break up and become a problem. So if you start to get a knocking from the front of your supercharger, I say again, most obviously when you turn the engine off, it's time to get this snout bearing changed. They're not expensive, they're quite easy to do. You do need to remove the supercharger, which will take you about six hours to do, but the bearing is inexpensive and very easy to change. Changing it early might mean a reduction of a repair bill that's going to get worse if you don't treat it. The other thing that goes wrong with these charges are the front bearings that are mounted here. Now, this is a bit more serious. You'll know they're starting to go because you'll get a sort of gravelly noise from the top of the supercharger. It'll be there all the time the engine is running and it's Sometimes when it first starts, it's quite subtle and you don't necessarily hear it over the engine noise, but it just starts to get louder and louder as these bearings start to wear more. Now, it's important you don't ignore that. If you're getting a gravelly, rattly noise from the top of your supercharger, it needs investigating and it needs investigating quickly. And there's two reasons for that. First of all, if the bearings are left untreated and they can actually break up, and as your supercharger is working, it will fold the contents of what was your bearings into your engine. This can cause immediate and catastrophic failure of your engine. It's really, really unusual, mainly because I guess most people realise the noise is getting pretty bad and they stop driving the car and they get it treated. But do get it investigated if you get this noise. The other issue is, if these bearings become worn and start to make a noise, they can actually be replaced. Your supercharger can be reconditioned. It's a service that we offer. This charger, out of the box, about 2,400 pounds. You can get it reconditioned for just over 1,000 pounds. Your snout bearing will be changed and your two front main bearings will be changed for that. However, if you leave it for too long, the blades inside the supercharger, once those bearings start to wear, can get too close. And as they fold on top of each other, they start to cause friction and they start to rub. Once those blades become worn, the supercharger goes in the bin. It's as simple as that. They can't be changed. And if you could change them, the cost of replacing them would be more than a new unit. So two reasons. If you get a noisy front bearing, a gravelly, rattly noise from your supercharger, you want to get it investigated. One, it can cause failure of your engine completely if left untreated. But more importantly, you can recondition it. It can be an awful lot cheaper if you catch it early. So that's the two main things that go wrong with these chargers. Generally, other than that, they're pretty much indestructible. They do have oil in them. 
Officially, it's not part of the service to change them, or no service schedule does it say to change the oil. However, we always recommend if you're getting to a car that's done 80, 90,000 miles, certainly at 100,000 miles, or if you're taking the charger off to recondition it or anything else, it doesn't do any harm to change your oil while you're working on it. But in theory, they're a sealed unit for life. But as I say, we like to change the oil if we're working on them or removing them for any reason. Second question we get asked about superchargers, how do I make it go faster? And actually, it's surprisingly easy to get an awful lot more performance out of this supercharger. This Eaton supercharger is rated up to 18,000 RPM. That's a lot of RPM. If you can imagine, your engine might rev to six, 7,000 RPM. This charger is working a lot harder. Out of the factory, interestingly enough though, the pulley on the, on the actual supercharger, and I've got a crank pulley here, and this is the pulley that sits down on the engine, those two combined will spin this charger at 14,000 RPM. But hang on, didn't I just say this charger is rated to 17 or 18,000 RPM? So you're way, way under the actual performance what this supercharger can do. So one of the really quick wins for performance is we fit one of these to the crank. As you can see, it's considerably larger than the stock pulley. So what you're doing here really is you're changing the gear ratio. Much like a push bike, if you can imagine, if you've got a crank pulley at the front that you're pedaling with, and you put a larger pulley on the front that you're then pedaling with, your back wheel is gonna go faster. And that's exactly what happens here. So one of the quickest, easiest ways to make more power out of a supercharged car, put a bigger pulley on the crank. Another option, is this little pulley here, this little back one. We do one that's slightly smaller. It doesn't look dramatically smaller, it's actually 7% smaller, and it has exactly the same effect. So, smaller pulley on the top makes the supercharger go faster, larger pulley on the bottom makes the supercharger go faster, and, faster. and guess what the magic solution is? Bigger pulley on the bottom and a smaller one on the top combined. That will take this charger to 17,000 RPM, still safe within the tolerances of the manufacturer, maximum boost pressure. In fact, up to 22% additional boost pressure over running stock with the modified pulleys. I hope that makes sense. I've got a couple of sound clips I'm going to show you now of a supercharger, unfortunately, that's looking not quite so healthy. And these are the sort of noise that you, noises that you want to be looking out for. So can you hear that kind of sort of slightly rough sound? That shouldn't be there. That's what we're listening to, and that is your main supercharger bearings that have become noisy. At the moment, this engine is cold. As it gets warmer, that noise is going to get quite a lot louder, but it's there all the time as a sort of constant background noise. Okay, so as the engine just shut off there, you heard that slight carry on, that sort of donk, donk, donk. Again, the engine's cold, and so this isn't really loud on this engine, particularly at the moment. It will get worse as the engine gets louder again, but that is the sound of a failing coupler bearing. So I hope you found that interesting. My advice would always be, if your supercharger starts to make a noise, anything that's rattling or gravelly from the top of the engine, get some professional advice as soon as you can. Certainly don't leave it. It's not gonna get fixed on its own, and an early repair might be a much cheaper repair. If you're looking for any advice, you can of course give us a call. And if you are looking for more power and performance from your vehicle, and you're looking to change the supercharger pulleys, of course, we have both pulleys in stock and available. And I would always recommend, particularly if you're getting the lower pulley change, you do need to run it with a remap. What you're doing, of course, is you're adding more and more air into your engine, more than potentially the ECU can adapt to on its own. If you put a larger pulley on there, the airflow becomes so great, in fact, and the potential for more performance comes so great, you do need to add more fuel, and you do that with a remap, which, of course, is something that we can provide for you too. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, get in touch. Do sign up to our channel, because we've got much more coming, and we're looking forward to seeing you again soon.